So listen to this, there's a lot of football players who have just let their careers go to waste, but not a single one did it in a more ridiculous fashion than Jose Rodriguez. The guy was a one in a billion talent, everything he did on the pitch resembled Ronaldo, he ran like him, dribbled like him, even struck the ball like him. It was so crazy that people used to joke that Real Madrid had cloned CR7 and Jose had been the outcome. But that's all before he met the love of his life, who for some reason ran him over with her car. But that's for later in the story. So, at just 14 years of age, Jose was already out of this world. Every team in Spain was coming after him and eventually he rejected Barcelona in favor of Real Madrid. The year was 2007, right as CR7 started a season that would earn him his first Ballon d'Or, leading Real Madrid to start one of the greatest transfer sagas of the 2000s. Maybe it was this incredible timing that led to it, or maybe it was just coincidence, but Reze became obsessed with Ronaldo. He trained not just to be good, but to be exactly like him, perfecting every move until the two were undistinguishable. They even had the same haircut. And so, three years later, as Ronaldo finished off his first in Madrid, Reze took the first step towards playing alongside his idol, joining Spain for the under-17 Euros and dazzling everyone. Being named in the team of the tournament despite their loss to England in the final and earning his first call-up to the Castilla, Real Madrid's B-team quickly winning over the fans who began campaigning for his inclusion in the first team. However, Mourinho for some reason wasn't so keen on that, forcing him to wait for 6 months and then only giving him a few shots in friendly matches, only to end up sending him back to the Castilla despite the fact he had impressed so much, he even got a standing ovation from the fans. Still, to be fair, before the season ended, not only did Mourinho give him his professional debut, but he also made sure to afford him 9 minutes of playing time in La Liga just to make sure he got that medal as well, now that he had already won the Segunda División with Castilla, even taking the award for the league top goal scorer. Oh, and by the way, guess who has that replaced in both of his appearances for the first team? Yup, Ronaldo. Regardless, that wasn't enough, and with Reze determined to prove Mourinho wrong, over summer he went into the 2012 Under-19 Euros hungrier than ever, scoring the opening goal in the first match and then scoring a hat-trick to fix the result at a three-goal draw in a match against Portugal. Let's just say that something like that only happened twice in history, so you can't tell me that it doesn't remind you of someone else. Regardless, after a tough match against France, Spain arrived in the final against Greece and of course, Reze scored the only goal to make them European champions, taking the tournament's golden boot and being selected for the team of the tournament once again before going on to celebrate the success by doing what any 19-year-old would do, having his first son. Yeah. He named him Reze Junior. Obviously, being a teenage dad should have been an early sign that Reze was a bit reckless, but regardless, over the following season he took off like never before, scoring 22 goals and getting 12 assists, about a goal contribution every 90 minutes, breaking the all-time record for most goals scored by a Castilla player, which had previously been held by Butragueño, one of the club's biggest legends, meaning that after performances like these, there was no real reason why he shouldn't have been afforded a chance at the first team, but still, over the whole season, it didn't get even one, not a single match. But thankfully for Reze, being criticized for not giving academy players enough game time was the least of Mourinho's problems that year, as eventually the entire dressing room turned against him, forcing him to leave the club as he told the press that 2012-2013 had been the worst season of his career. And so, yeah, Ancelotti arrived and with Reze once again impressing at the Under-20 World Cup with 5 goals in 5 matches, despite the fact he had just threatened to leave the club, he ended up instead finally joining the first team for good. Always coming in with about 10 minutes left on the clock and still managing to steal the show, even getting his debut goal for the club in El Clasico, with the assist provider being none other than CR7 himself. But don't for a second think he stopped there. A few weeks later he pulled off two assists against Almeria in a little more than half an hour, which then prompted him to start being afforded a bit more game time, immediately leading him to a run of two goals and three assists in six matches, including a late winner against Valencia which solidified him as an incredible super sub. 
but Reze seemed determined to force his way into the starting 11 and the moment he was afforded two consecutive starts for the first time in his career, everything changed, with Reze holding on to his spot and constantly being the most decisive player on the pitch, scoring the only goals against Espanyol and Bilbao on the first two starts and then adding one more goal against City rivals Atletico de Madrid on his third start as well as the winning goal and an assist against Villarreal in his fourth and finally a goal against Getafe on his fifth start for the team. So, five starts, five goals. To the Spanish media, Reze was the hottest topic. Some claimed he should start over Bale, others began calling him El Mini Bichito, another way of saying Mini Ronaldo. And with the hype building up, even national team coach Vicente Del Bosque made sure to warn Reze that if it depended on him, it would be called up for the World Cup in the summer for sure. Suddenly, it seemed the stage was set for Reze Rodriguez to become the next great Madridista. But in reality, he would never play a single match for Spain. One month later, Reze was afforded his first start in a Champions League knockout game and one minute and 54 seconds into the game, his world crumbled. With the ball close to the corner of the pitch, Reze tries to shield it and Kolasinac completely runs him over. Seeing Reze's face, you just knew that it wasn't a minor knock or anything of that sort. His anterior cruciate ligament was done and so was his season. At that moment, everything seemed to be going as horrible as it could possibly go. And if you doubt how bad it got, let me tell you that days after the match, it was confirmed he needed surgery. And just days after getting back to his house from the hospital, Reze had to be carried out of there by firemen as he was still wearing crutches when his house suddenly caught on fire. And even then, somehow, things got worse. Reze kept complaining about sharp pain in his knee and his doctor insisted it was just because he was still in recovery. Well, turns out if it wasn't for a second doctor intervening and insisting Reze should go through a third arthroscopy, no one would ever realize his knee was severely infected. As the second doctor would one day claim, the other doctor just didn't notice. In five minutes, I saved your career. In total, following these complications, Reze was out for eight months, watching from the stands as Brial won La Decima and missing the World Cup, the under-21 Euros and the Olympic Games. It was just awful timing. But to be fair, it wasn't like Reze seemed too interested in coming back to football as soon as possible. Instead, over those eight months, he was busy working on his music career. Yup, you heard it right. The guy joined a music group and made some reggaeton, and he was actually pretty successful. But hearing him on the radio surely didn't leave Ancelotti dying to have him back on a team whatsoever. <laughs> But on the other hand, the moment he came back, despite having the knee of a 30-year-old Ronaldo Nazario, he still somehow found it in him to score on his first match back and assist in the next one, before waiting a month or so and getting the winning goal against Sevilla. Even if he wasn't 100%, there was no denying he was still performing. However, this time around Ancelotti just didn't seem too interested in slowly fitting him into the team. Maybe it was because he had just announced his solo reggaeton project under the stage name J.M. But I'm just guessing here. <laughs> Regardless, only six months after his comeback, he was already claiming to be tired of the way he was treated and looking for a way out of the club, but then Ancelotti left before he could, so he decided to stay, hoping Benitez would give them the chances he deserved, and well, he kind of did. By mid-December, Reze had been afforded seven starts, not much, but definitely more than he was used to. But with just two goals and two assists over that period, well, things weren't looking great. But again, Reze was saved by the bell, with Benitez leaving in exchange for Zidane, who despite barely ever picking him for the starting 11, played Reze as a sub pretty much every game, finally allowing him to bounce back going on a run of four goals and five assists in 15 matches, which sounds only half decent until he realized he was playing about 10 minutes a game, meaning he was averaging a goal contribution every 42 minutes. For comparison, that same season, Ronaldo averaged one every 66 minutes, and those are Ballon d'Or winner kind of numbers. But still, Reze was not even afforded a single minute in the Champions League final. At that moment, it would already be easy for him to get ahead of himself, let his ego talk and make a wrong decision, but it became much worse since by then he was already dating Aura Ruiz, the supposed love of his life, better known as a Billy's celebrity with a hunger for the limelight. And with her on his corner, inflating his ego even further, Reze went along and began looking for a move out of the club. 
And of course, in what was a fortunate coincidence for Aura, he moved to Paris. I wonder if the fact she was known for being a fashion fanatic and serial shopper, who was reported to splurge over 6,000 euros a week on new clothes, had anything to do with his sudden move to the most glamorous city in Europe. And if there's any doubt Rial really did still believe in him, let's just say they made sure to add a clause to this deal which ensured he would never be sold to Barcelona. Yeah. Regardless, with a 25 million euro move and two Champions League trophies in his resume, Reze arrived at PSG ready to take the league by storm, except that instead, he started his time there by visiting the hospital after being hit with some good old appendicitis before finding out through an Instagram post that he had just become a father for the second time. Then claiming it was all a lie, confronting his ex-girlfriend and requesting a DNA test, which against his wishes proved he was indeed the father. Regardless, among all of this mess, Reze could barely score a goal before Unai Emery sent him out on loan to his childhood club, Las Palmas, where Reze immediately got the fans on his side claiming he would bring the club back to the European competitions before once again pretty much blanking every match for six months straight, almost leading them to relegation and being sent back to PSG, with the president of Las Palmas claiming that even though he had accepted a huge pay cut, he just still wasn't worth the money. And apparently PSG agreed, as they immediately sent him out on loan once again, this time to none other than Stoke City, as it seemed Reze was by now nothing more than a hot potato. Still, a winning goal versus Arsenal on his debut for Stoke was enough to have them fooled for a while, before rumors of cheating started affecting his relationship with Aura, who was already not the biggest fan of his move to England, leading to a sharp decline in the quality of his performances over the season, which got a million times worse when Aura, who by then had already been pregnant for a while, was forced to give birth to their son prematurely as he suffered from a number of different medical conditions, with the couple immediately leaving everything behind in England and going back to Spain to take care of their newborn. Or at least that was what was supposed to happen. Instead, soon after arriving, the two ended up breaking up, with Aura claiming that Reze had not even visited his son in over a month as he was simply too busy partying with old friends now that they were back home. Eventually, it all ended up in court, Aura accusing him of neglecting his fatherly duties, while Reze accused her of perjury, with the whole drama eventually leading Reze to completely disappear, forcing Stoke to ban him from the club, which obviously annoyed the fans but became much worse when the next Instagram post Reze made was an intimate one alongside Aura that indicated the two were back together, only for him to come back a week later with a post informing the fans the two were in fact still separated. Who knows what truly really happened there. Regardless, he eventually made his way back to Paris, with Tuchel forcing him to train alone as he quite simply didn't want anyone as problematic as him near his squad. However, even six months of solo training didn't serve as enough meditation to calm him down, as he decided to double down on his court case against Aura, telling the judge he didn't want her to pay any fines. He instead wanted to make sure the mother of his sick son ended up in jail for three to five years. While at the same time, Aura decided the best decision for her was to take part in the Spanish Big Brother. Regardless, the solo training did get Reza in shape once again, which led Real Betis to take him on loan where once again mediocrity ensued, with Reza instead making the news for spending $5,000 in text messages to vote Aura off of the reality show after she had been broadcasted to the entire nation playing funny games under the sheets with one of the other contestants. However, to be fair to him, it was right here that Reze began what looked like a redemption arc. Spending six months at Sporting, where despite things not working out, everyone at the club seemed to get along with him, while also moving on to dating another woman, though he would also immediately have a son with her, but at this point that's a given for him, so I won't even censor him too much. But yeah, as I was saying, after getting a league on medal for a total game time of one minute over the full season, he even launched a documentary called What Happened to Reze, in which he even promised his dad he would finally focus on his career. Before randomly traveling back to Spain to celebrate Aura's birthday with their friends, all during the peak of the pandemic, completely disregarding social distancing rules and putting all of his teammates in risk, leading to a huge controversy in the media that got all of the fans to hate him even more than before and PSG to pretty much tell him to leave and never come back. But that wasn't even his biggest problem at the time. After the party, Aura seemed to be under the impression that they were back together, which didn't last long after she caught him doing push-ups on top of her best friend, going crazy, attacking the two with a stick and throwing a bunch of furniture in the pool. 
And still, the aftermath of it all only got worse after Hezes' comments upset one of Aura's friends, to which she exposed him for also having had an affair with her. With the situation getting more dire by the minute, Aura did the most in-character thing of all and joined another reality show, with Hezek calling her live on TV to beg her to come back. As you might imagine, in the middle of all of this, no club would want to touch Hezek with a 10-foot pole, so in despair, he went back to Las Palmas who were now in the second division, begging for a second chance. And though hitting rock bottom did get him back to scoring goals, opening his first full season back at the club with 5 goals and 6 assists in 12 minutes matches, it was right there that their ongoing court case finally came to an end, with Aura being sentenced to 9 days of community service. Sounds simple for once, right? Well, not really, because as the two left the courtroom they shocked everyone by kissing, which was then shortly followed by an insane clip being leaked on social media where you can see a man, supposedly Reze, being run over by a car driven by a woman. Look, they insisted it wasn't them, but witnesses described the driver as a woman that perfectly matches Aura's description, the whole thing literally happened near a stadium where the couple has been confirmed to have been attending a concert at the time of the crime. It was exactly after that moment that Reze's form began to dwindle, and you can literally hear a voice saying, Oh, that's Reze, that's gonna injure him for sure, he won't be playing now. <laughs> Come on, you tell me, I guess. <laughs> But if you thought this was it for the world's sturdiest couple, instead, over the next couple of months, Aura announced to the public she wanted to shoot an adult film with Reze, before also announcing their engagement and the fact she was carrying Reze's sixth child. Ever since then, they did marry each other, and Reze played in Turkey for six months, before fleeing and securing a last-minute deal to join Sampdoria. I wish I was kidding, but yeah, see you next week.